And welcome back to the Southeastern Sports Report presented by State Farm. And, and with me now is Assistant AD for Development, Cody Gogler. And Cody, uh, just a lot to talk about. Spring heating up, a lot of things going on on campus, spring sports getting underway, and just a lot of irons in the fire. Let's talk about what's going on here. Yeah, you know, it's always an exciting time of the year when, when you kind of go through those first couple of weeks uh, being back after the break with no students, et cetera. You kind of, all the students are back on campus today, so you kind of get that feeling of momentum. Uh, it's always really exciting to, to, to get into the heart of uh, conference basketball play. Baseball season is less than 25 days around the corner as well as softball. So just a lot of exciting things going on. And, and before you know it, we'll be making plans for football season. Okay. And uh, we're just, you know, again, we're, we can't wait to get started. You know, Jay Ladner's basketball team and, and Yolanda Moore in the heart of conference play now. And, of course, you got uh, indoor track season. We've got softball, as you said, right around the corner. Baseball getting ready to crank up. Uh, just uh, it's a great time of year uh, to be a Southeastern line. But one thing coming up uh, soon will be the signing day bash. We talk about football in the fall, but there's that spring season, too, and that's recruiting. And uh, talk about the signing day bash. Yeah, the signing day bash kind of sets the tone each year. It gets these fans really excited about season tickets and wanting to be a part of uh, uh, the future of southeastern football. Uh, we're expecting a huge crowd in downtown Hammond at the mezzanine, uh, located right there, right in front of Kieran and, and adjacent uh, to uh, K Street Seafood Station. Uh, expecting it, like, like I said, a, a packed crowd. We're going to reveal the entire new recruiting class with highlights, the mid-year transfers, who are you know, quite a few guys coming from a lot of different junior colleges throughout the country, will be there for the fans to meet for the first time. That event's going to be on Wednesday, February 4th, uh, starting at 5 and we'll, we'll go all the way to 8. A lot of great food, uh, worth the price of admission. And, uh, you know, we, not only do we have athletics going on, but we also have the spirit groups that go along with it in the southeastern uh, dance team, the Lionettes, uh, had a great run down in Orlando. Talk about those guys, uh, bronze uh, medal coming back in UCA, UDA. The cheer and dance is just one of those things. You, you go to any Southeastern event, whether it's in the community, a parade or a fundraiser, you know, cheer and dance is always there. And so this was finally their time to, to focus on, on, on just them. And, and they've been practicing for a long time. And they went down to Orlando and absolutely nailed it. They got, I believe I got the bronze medal again for small colleges, which is a great achievement. Uh, they put in a lot of hard work. And, and uh, the atmosphere provided around our athletic department wouldn't be what it is if we didn't have them. So we're just extremely grateful for everything they do for us and happy that they were so successful again. And we talk about athletes uh, on the court, on the field, uh, the dance teams, cheerleaders, but uh, they wouldn't be here if they weren't students. And just a great run by the Southeastern uh, student athletes in the fall. 85 members of the Southeastern Athletics Department on the honor roll for the South Southland Conference. Just a great honor. And I think they had the most uh, 4.0 averages. It's just exceptional, you know. Uh, being a former Southeastern student athlete myself, uh, you know, Coach uh, Coach Artigues, you know, implemented into our baseball program. The most important thing is you need to represent this ball club in the classroom first, the community second, and if you do that, those things will take care of themselves and will win on the field. That's clear that his vision and his strategy for for academics being a priority has become. Uh, athletics department wide. You know, all of our student athletes were setting records each and every semester, and hopefully, we continue to grow that. Uh, well, just a, again, great job. And anything else you'd like to share with us? Uh, I just, here's the spring I, semester I don't get gets to do underway. I show with you very often. So, uh, as neighbors, uh, me and Mr. Willie are neighbors. This has been really cool. Uh, it's going to be exciting 2015, probably one of the biggest years we've had in uh, the, the, the school's history as far as athletics goes. Can't wait to share all the exciting news. And uh, glad, it's glad to have you aboard. This guy's a ball of energy and a great asset to the Southeastern Athletic Department. Cody, thanks for joining us here on the Southeastern Sports Report. Thanks for having me. And we'll be back with more Southeastern Sports Report presented by State Farm right after this. <gasps> Hello, beautiful. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Hi, Anthony. How much does my discount double check save me? About 150. Done. I don't have State Farm, but insurance, find me money. I got you a dollar. Oh, you almost had it. You gotta be quicker than that. Having insurance isn't the same as having State Farm. They're to help you with unexpected savings. That's getting to a better state. This is Sean. We saw him holding a Bud Light, which means he's up for whatever happens. In this case, Jimmy Johnson. I, Jimmy Johnson, challenge you to a little football game. Don't get nervous. Are we ready? I'm ready. Jimmy Johnson has dominated the electric football circuit. Yeah, look at the little Jimmy run. 
He's hurt. He's pushing through. He's pushing through. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's a win. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. Pete Langwell, head coach of your Lady Lions softball team. Softball season will be here before you know it. As our fall season comes to a close, fans don't forget to purchase tickets to the 14th annual Tangy Tourism Lion Classic season opener. For ticket information, visit lionsports.net or call 549-LION. See you in the spring and don't forget to lion up. And welcome back to the Southeastern Sports Report presented by State Farm. It's time to take a look at Lady Lions basketball as they took on Houston Baptist. Gets it to Hernandez, down low to pull. Nice move by Nana. She lays it in and the game's first field goal goes to Southeastern and Nana Poole. He go to Strickland. Nice cut. She finds Steenhold who lays it in off the glass. We're tied at two with a minute gone by. Corner now to Hernandez, good pass to pull just inside the free throw line. Nana hits, and it is a 6-2 Southeastern lead. Nana Poole with four early points. Shank on the right wing and nearly stolen by Styles. Now she's got it. Here comes Liz into the front court all the way, and one. Elizabeth Styles gets the bucket and the bruise, and she'll go to the free throw line to try to complete the three-point play. Here is Shank pulling up from the elbow. Too strong. Hoskins with a good traffic rebound. And Jamika looking to push. Nice dish to Hernandez. She lays it in. Nice job by Goose running the floor. And Hoskins found her. And shot clock shows 13. Anderson wants to pull up. Now she's going to drive. Dishes to pull. Nana lays it in. And a nice. Drive by Anderson and she laid it off to Poole who has six here in the early going. Down, they've got a five on four opportunity. Anderson pulls up and hits it off the glass. 14 to two. Southeastern running away with this one and another timeout got to be called. Taking advantage of it. Styles into the front court, down low to Poole. Nana with the turnaround, lay it off the glass, and it is now 16 to 2. Manguma, too strong. She gets her own, is going to go up and hits. And the foul, that ends a Jefferson ahead to Wanguma. Back to. Arthur, Rachel Arthur with the basket. Found a Hoskins screen. Top of the arc. Here's Anderson catching, shoot around the curl. Nice shot. Peaches Anderson. Husky shooting four of 22 from the floor in this first half. McGarrahan thought about the three. Now skipped it to Jefferson. Here is Strickland, she's going to drive, gets the little scoop shot off the glass, and at the eight minute mark, they hit double figures. It's 24-11, Southeastern here, but their trouble as Arthur hits, their trouble has been at the defensive end of the floor right now as they just cannot get a stop. Hoskins grabs the rebound ahead to Goose. Hernandez down to Hoskins. She lays it in, and that is the first Southeastern field goal in eight and a half minutes. And it's back to a double digit lead at 26 to 15 for Southeastern. Here's Goose, top of the arc. Kicks it over to Underwood in the left corner. Bounce pass down to Poole. Good cut by Hoskins, and Poole found her. Nana Poole with the dime. Jamika Hoskins with her fourth point of the first half and it is now an 11 point lead. 
We come up on two and a half to play here in this first half. Styles all the way to the top, plays it in. Elizabeth Styles having a good first half. Down low to Steenholt as Poole tried to front her that time. And Steen gonna get it into Anderson. She fires and comes up well short. That brings us to halftime. Southeastern led by as many as 17. They enjoy a nine point advantage at intermission, 32 to 23. Southeastern lead as they steal on the inbound pass to Steenholt. It's the lay in. They are sticking with the press. Goose breaks it, goes in all the way, too strong, and Steenholt grabs the rebound. Underwood back all by herself. Arthur hits it's down to a three point ball game. Drives in, nice runner off the glass with Taylor Underwood. Gets it to Erica Hernandez. Goose looked like she wanted to pull the trigger on the three. Gets it to Peaches Anderson, who will. A long distance call for Peaches Anderson. These two teams training blows here as a bad pass. Anderson couldn't handle it. As on the lay-in, it was Jefferson. Peaches Anderson steps back and hits. Peaches Anderson catching fire here. She has 11. And earlier this year, and Erica Hernandez with a long distance call. In the ball game, Hernandez Gets it in to Hoskins. She wanted to drive, lost it. Gets it to De La Cruz. She hits the long distance call. Anissa De La Cruz with a big shot. It's back up to eight. So Hoskins now will set it up. And here comes Styles back to the scorer's table. So with the shot clock at seven, Jamaica will go to work. She has it stolen away by Steenholt who will have it knocked away by Hoskins, and she can't hit the layup. Strickland can hit it. Loose ball, and we have a whistle against Houston Baptist. Let's see who got it. To 56, Styles gets in and gets the shot to go. Elizabeth Styles with 12. And a three ball is hit by McGarrahan. We're down to a one point ball game. And Hoskins throws it away. Poole knocks it away, and De La Cruz comes up with the loose ball, and she is fouled. Who's here? First one is good. She remains perfect from the free throw line. Southeastern, 49 and 9 tenths yes. left. Stay in it. She misses that one, so it's a two-point ball game. Here's McGarrahan now. Where's 11? Into the front court. She has it left wing, drives baseline. Taylor Cruz, or pull one, got a hand on that. Goes back up, can't hit. Hoskins grabs the rebound, taps it to Styles, and a foul. Got to be called. It is good. She gets the front end. And she has one more, and this is the big one. This would make it a two-possession game right here. Styles, seven of eight from the free throw line now, a team high 13 points. She gets the roll. She's got 14 now. 67 to 59 over Houston Baptist, their second straight. They improved the two and one in league play. Houston Baptist falls to 0 and four. And Southeastern takes care of it on the home floor here this afternoon. And congratulations to Yolanda Moore and her Lady Lions as they defeated Houston Baptist. When we come back, we'll take a look at the men's action against Houston Baptist right after this on the Southeastern Sports Report presented by State Farm. Aaron, you're all set. Great, thanks. Mike, thanks for doing that discount double check. You saved us hundreds. What was that? The discount double check? It's when we comb through your policies to make sure that you're getting all the discounts you deserve. No, I get that part, but you guys are doing my move. The 
Discount double check move? That's my touchdown dance. You're a dancer? I'm a quarterback. Oh, quarterback. More. I'm a robot. <laughs> Get out of here. Aaron Rodgers got his. How about you? Count on Patty Hubert and Punchatula for the discounts you deserve. Let's hear it for Bud Light, the perfect beer for when you take over a town, make me the mayor, call it whatever you say. Then pack it to the brim with so much spontaneous, never thought I'd be doing this awesomeness that it's hard to believe we actually pulled it off. Right? <gasps> Body bowling, roller disco, Bud Light, tiny cars, tiny horses, big celebrities, Bud Light, dancing, karaoke, Bud Light, whatever that is. This guy, this girl, oh my, wow, look at that. Bud Light and Bud Light, then put it on the internet for everyone to see. And whatever else happens. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. Find out more at upforwhatever.com. Hi, I'm Pete Langwell, head coach of your Lady Lions softball team. Softball season will be here before you know it. As our fall season comes to a close, fans, don't forget to purchase tickets to the 14th annual Tangy Tourism Lion Classic season opener. For ticket information, visit lionsports.net or call 549-LION. See you in the spring, and don't forget to lion up. Welcome back on the Southeastern Sports Report presented by State Farm. The men took on the Houston Baptist Huskies right here at the University Center. Here are the highlights. They go to Jackson, down low to Ochi. Ochi taking a strong reverse layup. He scored the first bucket in the first half, scores the first lion bucket here in the second half. 11 points for Ochi. Pass stolen by Guillory. Guillory uh, near side, Fillmore. Fillmore stops, gives it to Ochi. Ochi lays it up and in, running the floor. Ochi. A couple of points here, a couple of buckets here in the second half. Have the basketball, Ochi takes inbounds, pass from Guillory. Ochi turn around, jumper on the way, good. Ochi's on fire here in the second half. He's three out of three, 51-31, the lead is 20. Up goes right, pull up, 16-footer on the way, good. 51-33. Ochi had it knocked away out of his hands. Oh, Duncy to Smith. Smith, shot blocked from behind by Fillmore. Joshua just got position. And Smith goes 5'6", Fillmore a little taller than him, not many guards, he towers over. Jackson free throw line gonna try to take it. And a shot off the glass, good. Downtown, lay up on the way, tipped up by Ibarra. And that one's up and in, baseline, double team. Bounces it, Jackson got a hand on it, got the steal, saves it to Upson, back to Jackson. Zay looking to run, right to left into the front court. Down the floor to Guillory, Andrew taking it all the way, he'll lay it up and in, and the foul. Just heads up, heads up Jackson, and Guillory, he knows if he can get down the floor, he's got a good chance of getting his hands on the basketball. Guillory angles right, gets a screen by Epson, gonna bring it around, middle of the paint, gonna take it all the way, lay it up and in, left-handed layup by Guillory. A lot like the first half, the middle of that paint is wide open. Looking for a little help. Crossover dribble down low to Ochi. Ochi's going to take it power. He'll turn, reverse, lay it up and in. Ochi, another bucket. Got fouled and looked at Jay Lander, shrugged his shoulders. He's got 17. Eight here a little bit. Guillory, left wing. Couple of dribbles, bounces it to Jenkins. Shot clock at 12. Near side, Fillmore. Three ball on the way. That one good. Fillmore knocked it down from the wing. Three out of six from downtown. Their seventh three ball of the night. Greaves to Jackson, near side, Guillory. Hillary, double team, bounces it to Jackson. Zay, back to Greaves, right side, Greaves, near side, Fillmore, Joshua for three, yes. Another three for Fillmore, 72-54, 18-point Lion lead. Jackson, back to Guillory. Guillory, couple of dribbles. Jackson, near side, Zay, down low to Upson. Upson, alley-oop, laid it up and in. Assist for Jackson, his fifth of the night, bucket for Upson, 74-56 ball out of the zone. Greaves, three from the far corner. Yes, Graves with a three ball. 77-58, 435 to go. Tried to work it in mid to Upson. Upson will lay it up, score and get the foul. Devontae may have got away with a little travel there. Foul on Ibarra with a three-point opportunity right here. Free throw up on the way, that one good. Trying to drive, can't do it in the middle to Ibarra. Ibarra will lay it up, miss the easy one. Out of there comes Jackson. Zay, middle of the paint, bounce pass, Guillory. Guillory lays it up and in. That's how you run a fast break. 82-61, biggest lead of the night. Stetler has it. And Greaves to steal. Foot race now. Greaves going to take it. He'll lay it up and score. Greaves gets the steal in the bucket on the other end. He's got 
six points tonight. Dax is going to drive in the corner of Fillmore. Joshua for three. Bingo! Joshua, 10-3 ball of the night for the Lions. His fifth. He's five out of eight from downtown. That did it right there. And congratulations to Jay Ladner as he picked up his first conference win as a Southeastern head coach over the Houston Baptist Huskies. Now let's go down to Orlando as the Southeastern Lionettes brought home some hardware from the UCA UDA championships. The Southeastern Louisiana University Dance Squad is bringing home a bronze medal from the 2015 UCA UDA College Cheerleading and Dance Team National Championships, which wrapped up this past Sunday at the ESPN Wide World of Sports Complex. The Lionettes, Southeastern's dance team, placed third in the hip hop competition and placed fourth in jazz. Coached by Paige Laparouse Hall, the Lionettes bring home a bronze medal for the third consecutive year. Southeastern had previously won medals in the jazz category. Competing in the small co-ed Division I category, the Southeastern cheerleaders marked their fourth consecutive entrance into the finals, finishing 10th. More information on the competition can be found at varsity.com. And congratulations to the Lionettes as they finished third in Orlando, brought home the bronze. When we come back, we'll take a look at Pete Langua's Lady Lions softball team right here on the Southeastern Sports Report, presented by State Farm. And this will be your premium right here. Sorry to interrupt. I just want to say I combined home and auto with State Farm. Saved 760 bucks. Love this guy. Okay. Does it bother anybody else that the mime is talking? Freaky. Bundle home and auto, and you could save 760 bucks. Count on Ken Keneally in Baton Rouge for the discounts you deserve. Hi, I'm Pete Langwell, head coach of your Lady Lions softball team. Softball season will be here before you know it. As our fall season comes to a close, fans don't forget to purchase tickets to the 14th annual Tangy Tourism Lion Classic season opener. For ticket information, visit lionsports.net or call 549-LION. See you in the spring and don't forget to lion up. Now welcome back to the Southeastern Sports Report presented by State Farm. New semester is here, it's spring, and time for spring sports. Let's head out to North Oak Park and check out Pete Langlois' Southeastern Lady Lions softball team. For 19 years, head softball coach Pete Langlois has been welcoming his team back to campus before the regular students arrive. Coach is impressed with what he's seen so far. He just wants to see it on the field and not in a gym. Well, the biggest thing was that we kind of, for the first time in a while, we've come back in shape. Uh, we got some really fast kids, and, and they all did their workouts and followed the, the meal plans over the break, and, and we looked good physically uh, for the first day. I mean, we, we looked like we were ready to play ball. Now we just got to put the pieces together to get, get prepared for the first game. The cold, wet Louisiana weather has restricted what Coach Langwine and the ladies can do as a team, but with the indoor facility, his team is a lot better off than some other teams. Get in here and you in, indoors and take care of your business. Everybody's got to work on rundowns. You got to work on bunt defenses. You got to work on pickoffs. You might as well dive back on a nice piece of turf instead of the dirt. So you can come in and take care of some of the necessities that you have to fix. You got to fix your first and thirds. You can do that indoors. It's closed. You can get loud. You can work on it. And uh, and that's a piece that you got to do whether you're inside or outside. The good thing is is we're one of the few teams that can do it inside instead of on a gym floor or somewhere a hardwood floor we're able to do it in a, in, a, in a softball setting. A softball team can only go as far as its pitching staff will take them. And early on, Coach Langwai likes his pitchers, but he will know more when they get outside and face some live hitting. Well, it's still a little bit early. You know, we're kind of working on fastballs and change-ups right now. Hadn't got in the screw balls, rise balls, all that other stuff. But uh, physically, you know, Spencer's back really strong, and she looks really, really strong. Of course, you know, Tori's recovering from that broken finger, and uh, but she's in great shape. She looks like she's going to be able to throw hard, mix that change-up in. She'll be fine. Uh, but it's still a little early. We hadn't hit live yet off a of live pitch, and they've been hitting off of me and Coach Kendra. But uh, 
uh, you know, we're excited about the guys we have. One of the big questions is how would power hitter Amber Sather recover from her off-season injury? And early signs are she'll be just fine, along with Megan Moore by her side. She's 100% ready to go. As you saw in that last game, her first at bat was like a triple. Her second bat was a home run. And uh, so the, the time off may have done her some good to kind of get her composure back. But yeah, she's back in great shape, ready to go. Uh, excited about having her and Megan Moore back in the 3-4 spot, you know. As you know, Megan was a 350 hitter last year up there with home runs right there with Amber. And, you know, 3-4, three, four, four, three and 4, however we hit them, they got to protect one another. And so we feel good about that mixture, that combination, I mean. If Coach Langwa has one concern going into the season, it's the mental side of his team and how they will react when they're thrown into the fire of live competition. Our tenacity. We, I've got really good kids. We've got good athletes, good kids, good students. My, my concern right now is, and you saw it in the fall when we got beat, we kind of took that defeat like it was just another day at the park. And that's what we're working on right now, that mental toughness. How bad do you want to win? What are you willing to do to win? How far will you dive? How far, how hard will you go? That's our biggest question right now. And, and we're a little bit young, so you know that's always an issue in, in that area. But we got to find out who, who's going to go to battle, other than the Ambers and the Katie LaCours and the Megan Moores, who we know are day in, day out, they will we got to get those new guys going, Booker and, and, and Wingate and those new starters for us. The Lady Lions will open the 2015 season on February 6th against Alcorn State in the Tangy Tourism Lion Classic at Chapapila Park in Hammond. For more info on Lady Lions softball, please visit lionsports.net and click on the softball link. And once again, thanks a lot to Pete Langwa and his Lady Lions softball team as we took a nice uh, look into his season upcoming, which will begin on February 6th in the Tangy Tourism Classic, which will be held at Chapapila Park next to the airport. Well, that'll do it for this week's edition of the Southeastern Sports Report. I'm Mark Willoughby. Alan Waddell will be back in the chair next week, and we'll see you right back here on the Southeastern Sports Report presented by State Farm. Corner now to Hernandez. Good pass to pull just inside the free throw line. Man, a hit. And it is a 6-2 Southeastern lead. Nana Poole with four. Shank on the right wing and nearly stolen by Styles. Now she's got it. Here comes Liz into the front court all the way and one. Elizabeth Styles gets the bucket and the bruise. And she